Hello. In this video, I'd like to talk about complex numbers and the dimensions of complex numbers and representing a complex number as a function. If you like what I do and you'd like to support it, well then Patreon is the best place to do that. So, let's begin. Firstly, I'd like to do some very quick recap. A complex number has two components, a real component and an imaginary component. And the building block for the real number line is the square root of plus one, whereas the building block for the imaginary number line is the square root of minus one. We use z as the placeholder for the arbitrary complex number, and in rectangular coordinates we say that it is x, the real component, plus iota times y, the imaginary component. And we can re-express this using Euler's equation here. And of course, complex numbers are two-dimensional, and hence they can be represented on an Argand diagram, or they are on the infinite number plane. So, as I said, we represent the arbitrary complex number as z, and we have x, the real component, plus iota times y, the imaginary component. The thing is, though, that in science, engineering, and mathematics, there are generally more than one real component. And generally we use the placeholders x, y, and z for the real elements of various functions. The thing is, though, that essentially we are using up the placeholders that we use for the real numbers just to represent a sing single complex number. And that basically means that when we start transitioning to have three real dimensions, we're going to run out of placeholders. So complex numbers can be rather tricky. We've already seen that a two-dimensional complex number has a single real component and a single imaginary component. But if we talk about three real components like x, y, and z, we now have a six-dimensional complex number. Now, probably the best way to represent a complex number z is actually in a functional form, where we say z is a function of x and y, if of course it's given in this particular format here. Now I'm going to make a step and for the moment I'm going to ask that you simply accept it. And thereafter I'll go through some examples which hopefully will convince you that the step I took was in fact correct and fair to do. I'm going to say that we are no longer going to represent a complex number as simply z, but rather as the function f. And the function f is itself a function of two subfunctions, which I'm going to call u and v. And u is a real function, so that it calculates a real number, whereas v is an imaginary function and calculates an imaginary number. This means that we can say the arbitrary two-dimensional complex number is given by u plus iota times v, where u and v are both a function of x and y. Now, I'm sure you're immediately raising your eyebrows, saying that, well, z itself is a function of x, the real component, and y, the imaginary component, and how can u be a function of both x and y if it's to calculate a real component? And by analogy, why can v be a function of x and y if it's to calculate an imaginary component? Surely there should be no y here and no x here. Well, as I said, I'm asking you to simply accept this for the moment. If you think about our simple complex number z is x plus iota times y, well, in that case, u, the real function, is simply given by x, and v, the imaginary function, is simply given by y. In reality, both x and y are simply numbers. So, mathematically, though perhaps not intuitively, there's no reason something like this cannot, in fact, be true. And what I'm going to do now is give an example to say that there are myriad functions which can have both an x and a y component in both the real and imaginary functions. 
I'd like that you consider the complex number I'm going to call z sub 0, which is x sub 0, its real component, plus iota times y sub 0, its imaginary component. And we're going to take its square. Now, of course, the algebra is very straightforward, and we see that this becomes the functional form of the real function u. It's x sub 0 squared plus y sub 0 squared. Notice there's no iota here. It's simply a real number. Similarly, the imaginary function v is given by twice x0, y0. So we can say that the almost simplistic and fundamental function z sub 0 to be squared is itself a function of a real function u and an imaginary function v, where both of those are themselves functions of x0 and y0. Now we're going to add in another function I'm going to call z1, and that's x1 plus iota times y1. And we're going to calculate the product z0, z1. Once again, the algebra is straightforward, and we get a real function u and an imaginary function v. And we see that both of those functions are themselves functions of x sub 0, y sub 0, x sub 1, and y sub 1. And these are two very straightforward functions of the myriad types of complex functions you can have out there. So I hope that I've convinced you that we can represent a complex number, let's say, for example, the product z sub 0, z sub 1, as the sum of a real function u and an imaginary function v, where each of those are themselves functions of each of the components of our, our, our imaginary number lines. I did say that when we transition to higher dimensions in the, in the real number lines, that we'll start running out of variables. And there are lots of different ways to represent a complex number in the higher dimensions. And I'm going to suggest one. It mightn't be the best way, it's certainly not the only way, but it's simply a suggestion. Let's return to our 2D complex number. In the past, we would have said this is z equals x plus iota times y. And I'm going to suggest that x be the placeholder for the single dimension, whether it be a real or an imaginary dimension. So I'm going to say the 2D complex number is x sub r for the real dimension plus iota times x sub i, the imaginary dimension. And this means that the functional form of our 2D complex number is given by u, a function of x sub r, x sub i, plus iota times v, a function of, of x sub r, x sub i. Of course, this is very easily extended into having higher complex dimensions. And this follows the same format as we're used to dealing with, with our spatial dimensions. And that's where I'll stop. I hope you got a bit out of that. You understand the, the dimensionality of complex numbers and how to represent a complex number as a function. Thanks for watching. Please pass it to your friends. And if you liked it, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.